welcome back to my little crochet corner my name is maham and i crochet things that turn your everyday objects into something a little bit cuter you can find some of my free patterns posted over here on my blog and if you like my work and want to support me with donations you can do so by purchasing my ko-fi patterns or donating directly today i'm going to be showing you how to make a completely customizable pencil case or makeup pouch with two different designs so the best thing about this tutorial today is that if you don't want to make a pencil case you can just make the size wider and make it into a makeup pouch if you don't want to make a pencil case or a makeup pouch and you want to make something smaller like a wallet all you have to do is do less rows and you'll have a wallet so this tutorial is completely customizable and it's completely up to you to use as you want to make whatever you want for example if you don't like the charm so today i'm showing you how to crochet a strawberry charm and a heart charm but if you don't want to do any of those you can do a mushroom you can do a frog so what I am going to be showing you today is how to do a checkers pattern and the easiest way to make a pouch or case or wallet and how to have a little clasp that attaches to a crochet charm that you make instead of a button. So it's super easy. They both follow a very similar pattern and let's get started. For all of the pencil cases, we are going to be using the same technique. So we're going to start off with a foundation chain and then keep doing rows until the piece is twice as long as what we want our pencil case to be. So we will originally be making a piece that's very long, but then we're going to be folding it to get the actual size that you want for your pencil case. And then at one end, we will be making like a round shape with decreased stitches and then just joining it all together with slip stitches on the side. So same method for all the pencil cases, just different designs. For this project, I'm going to be using a 4.5 millimeter hook and yarn size that is appropriate for the hook. And we're gonna start off by making a slip knot. So if you're a beginner, you wrap it around your fingers, turn your fingers around, grab the yarn and just pull and you're gonna have a slip knot. And now you're gonna be chaining the width that you want your pencil case to be. So again, for beginners, this is how you chain. If you have a pencil, I did a total of 12 chains and now I'm gonna be doing my turning chain. So this doesn't count as a stitch, it's just your turning chain. And then I'm going to be single crocheting in the second chain from my hook. You can use double crochet, half double crochet, whatever stitch you prefer. The pattern is mainly focused on the shape of the pencil case and how it's joined rather than what stitch is used. So it's completely up to you. If you don't like single crochets, you can use a different kind of stitch. So single crochet in each chain all the way down the row. Here I have crocheted one single crochet in each chain. Now I'm at the end of my first row. I'm going to do my turning chain, turn my work and single crochet in each stitch down the row again. So this is where we start forming the body of our pencil case. And you're just going to keep doing rows of single crochet or rows of whatever stitch you're doing until the piece is as long as you want. So twice as long as you want. Here I'm going to be single crocheting in my last stitch of my second row and then I'm going to start my third row, turning chain, turn your work and just single crochet in each stitch all the way down and now you're just going to keep doing rows till it's as big as you want. So here's an example of what I mean. Just take the pen or pencil that you're making your pencil case for and put it in the middle and if you can comfortably fold your piece around the thing that you want to make it for then that's how long your piece should be. So I still have a lot more rows to do. And you're not working on both sides, so you just have to increase this part till it's long enough to comfortably fold around your object. Here's what my piece looks like when it's all done. I've done rows upon rows of single crochet, and when I fold it in half, I am able to comfortably fit a pen inside it. So I've reached the length that I want, and now we're going to be working on the flap over here. So I've just put a little, sorry, that must be annoying. 
I've just put a little bobby pin up here in the corner just to mark where my flap starts from. So the next few rows are going to be the flap. You're going to start off by doing two regular rows just like you were doing before. So just one single crochet in each stitch and you're going to do this for two rows. Or depending on how big you want your flap to be because right now we're just doing the straight part of the flap and not the curved edges. I finished my first row without chaining one, without the turning chain. I'm just going to turn my work and single crochet into that first stitch. And I'm going to single crochet in each stitch down the row again to do my second row. I'm finishing up my second row of regular single crochet stitches one in each stitch and now we're going to be starting with the curved edge of the flap so here's a visual example right now we're working on the flap and it is directly connected to your long piece we did the regular rows that build the length for the flap and now we're going to be making the curved edge with some single crochet decreases and to do the single crochet decreases start by turning your work to the other side and now we're going to be single crocheting two stitches together. So this stitch right here and this one. So insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, but don't yarn over and pull through. Instead, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and once you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is how you single crochet two together. And now in all of the other stitches, I'm just going to insert one single crochet like normal until I reach the end where I'll have two stitches left. And now I have two stitches left and I'm going to be single crocheting both of them together. So do it the same way you did at the start of this row and yarn over pull through all three. So you have a decrease here and a decrease here. Now we're gonna turn our work and these decreases are what make your curved edges. Now, without your turning chain, because I think that just makes my edges a little bit neater, I'm just gonna insert my hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, and we're gonna start the next row by also single crocheting two together. Single crochet two together, and now just insert one single crochet in each stitch until you have two stitches left. I've got two stitches left and I'm going to single crochet both of them together. Now turn our work and do another round of decreases. So I'm going to be doing three rows, not rounds, three rows of the same pattern. So single crochet two together, one single crochet in each stitch, and then single crochet two together. Now you can keep doing these rows until your curved edge or your flap is as big as you want or you could just do three like me it all depends on the hook size you're using how big you want it to be the yarn size you're using okay i'm at the end single crochet two together i folded my piece and i've got the area where i put my bobby pin just to show me where to fold it and i fold it and that is basically what it looks like now, if you want, I think I'm going to make it a little bit down and make the flap look a little bit longer just by removing the bobby pin and putting it somewhere else. And this is what your flap is gonna look like. Now, the next step is to make the heart and then we're going to be putting it all together. You can end this by chaining one or two, depending on how tight or secure you want it to be. Take your scissor, cut it, pull, tighten it and yeah that's it i'm using the same size hook and yarn and we're going to start off by making a magic ring so you wrap your yarn around your fingers like this grab it with your hook and twist and now we're going to chain two so the first chain i'm going to do it while the yarn is still on my fingers 
and then I'm going to let it go and then I'm going to do the second chain just like that. So we have our magic ring and we have chain two and now we're going to be inserting three triple crochets inside the magic ring. So yarn over two times, insert your hook into the circle, grab the yarn, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two again. So that's your first triple crochet and you're going to do it two more times to get a total of three triple crochets. And now we're going to be inserting three double crochets. So to do this, you yarn over once, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your first double crochet. And now you're going to do two more. Okay, so three triple and three double. And now you're going to chain one. Now we're going to be doing the corner of the heart and insert one triple crochet inside the circle, just one. Then chain one again and now we're going to be starting the other side of the heart. So we're going to repeat the same pattern. We're going to do three double crochets. That's three double crochets, and now we're going to be doing three triple crochets. It's my second triple crochet, and my last or third triple crochet. And now we're going to chain two to end the heart. And we're going to slip stitch into the middle. But before I do that, I'm just going to tighten it a little bit. Okay, so you're going to see our heart shape has formed. And then you're going to insert your hook back into the center of the heart and slip stitch. So to do that, you pull it and then that same loop, pull it through like this. And now I'm going to chain one, actually I'm going to chain two just to make it super secure and then we're going to cut. So I'm just going to cut the yarn, pull everything and there you have your heart. The next thing we're going to do is find the placement of our heart. So you want to place it where you can comfortably wrap this. So this is going to be pulled up. And then we're going to shut it with a clasp that's going to go around your heart. So make sure that you place your heart somewhere that it can comfortably fit. When I go to attach my heart, I've got my ends and the place where I want to insert it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook through where the place I want my heart to be. And just grab onto the ends and pull them through. And that's just going to put my heart there. Oops, I forgot this one. So just grab the ends and pull it through and tighten. And that then you can see if your heart is in the right place or not. So I just tied a knot at the back and my heart is securely attached. I'm not going to sew it on because I do need this place a little bit empty so the clasp can go on. And now our next step is going to be to join the sides together and make the clasp. To start this off, I have my bob you can place just to hold everything together. And you're going to get the color that you want for your border. We're going to attach the yarn with a knot. And to do this, you just slide your hook at the edge. It can be anywhere because there's no actual stitch there. So just slide your hook wherever you get space. And attach the yarn. So to do this, you're going to pull this through and now you can tie a knot to secure. 
and there you'll have your color attached. And then you're just going to insert your hook through both pieces. So now we're going to be working through both pieces. So when you insert your hook, make sure that you go through both of these pieces together. And you can work over your end so that it doesn't show on the side. So this part is a bit tricky because there's no actual stitch that you can go through. So just find whatever you can go through. And chain one. And now we're going to be slip stitching. So just go through, insert your hook. Pull up a loop and that same loop you're gonna slide it through so that is a slip stitch insert your hook pull up a loop so don't grab this one oops sorry don't grab this one just grab this one through and you're just gonna do this all around the pencil case make sure that you're staying close to the edge not going too far off otherwise that would make an unneat border so I'm nearly to the edge and this is what it looks like so far. I'm going to leave the bobby pin there and just work into the stitches that are closer to it until I can take it off. So now that I only have two stitches left, I'm going to take it off. This is just so that I don't lose track of where it's supposed to connect from. So these are really, really tight and if you're struggling with doing slip stitches this way, don't worry, it is really, really hard. Okay, I'm on my last one, and we have finished the first side. To start the slip stitches on this part, you're just gonna insert your hook and slip stitch. Continue with the slip stitches like normal. So I'm just gonna do this till I reach over here. Now we're gonna be starting the clasp and the clasp is just chains so you're just gonna chain one two three four I think five would be good and it just has to be long enough to wrap around your heart okay this is gonna be difficult to show but it just has to be long enough to wrap around your heart like this and connect back on the other side did six chains and now you're gonna leave a little bit of gap and then you can slip stitch back into where you were working okay so back to doing slip stitches and you're just gonna slip stitch all the way down the flap and then down the other side so just like how we did it before so you're gonna slip stitch all the way down and then you're gonna slip stitch these two pieces together just like you did over here. To end it, I just chained one and then I cut it and now I'm gonna pull and then tighten it and then we'll be all done. And then I can just tuck this in, push it in with my hook inside my pencil case and we'll be all finished. For the next pencil case, I'm going to be making a checkers pattern. So I'm going to be showing you a short demo of how to start the pattern, how to switch colors, how to continue with it, and then the length and the width is completely up to you. And then you're just going to be following the same steps as we did for the previous pencil case by making a long strip and then folding it in half, and then we're going to be making the flap. So for this pencil case, I'm also using a 4.5 millimeter hook and pink and white yarn. We're going to start off by making a slip knot. And then you're going to chain the width that you want for your pencil case. So consider this as your foundation chain. And on top of this foundation chain, we will be building our checkers pattern. Before you start your foundation chain, you do have to plan out how many stitches each color is going to be. So this is my pattern that I'm going to be doing. I have my foundation chain, 12 chains. I'm going to be chaining 12 and then every four stitches will be one color. So for example, I'll do four single crochets of pink and then four single crochets of white, four single crochets of pink, and then I'm going to turn it around, start my next row, with four single crochets of white and then vice versa. It's going to go on like that. 
So you do have to plan this out before you start and just chain the number that is required for your width. When you have the number of chains that you want for your width, you're going to be doing your turning chain. And now you're going to be working into your chains. So we're going to start by working into the second chain from our hook. And I'm using single crochet, but once again, you can use any stitch that you like. And like the pattern that I showed you at the start, that's the one I'm going to be following. So I'm going to be doing four single crochets. Okay, so I have three single crochets and I'm about to do my fourth. And in the last stitch of your previous color, that's where you're going to attach your next color. So this is going to be my fourth single crochet and then I have to start my next color. So in this stitch, I'm going to be attaching my next color. So don't complete your single crochet or whatever stitch you're doing. Instead, get the other color that you're going to be using. I'm using white. Make a little loop with it like this and then slide that loop through your previous color to complete the single crochet. Now you're going to be working on top of this. So you're going to be carrying your previous color, but working with your new color. So tighten this, hold the yarn, and now I'm going to be doing four single crochets with my white or your next color. So it all depends on the pattern that you're using and how many stitches you're doing. So I did three single crochets and now I'm going to be doing my fourth single crochet with white and in your last stitch of the color, that's when you switch to your next color. So I'm going to be doing my last single crochet with white and after pulling up a loop, I'm going to put white aside, I'm going to take the pink and I'm going to complete the single crochet with pink and that is how you switch to your next color. Then I'm going to tighten this a little bit. And now I'm going to be working with the pink and doing my next four single crochets. I'm at the last single crochet of my row and I'm going to be switching colors. So I'm going to hang on to the pink, grab the white and complete my single crochet with the white. Then I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to make sure that I'm carrying my pink. So don't leave it there. I'm going to chain one or do my turning chain with the white and then I'm going to be working into the single crochet stitches. So go under the pink because you have to carry it. Now I'm just going to be doing four single crochets. And this is how you do all your rows until you have the length that you want. So I did three single crochets and then on my last single crochet of this color, I'm going to be switching to pink. And so you're just going to keep doing this until you have the length that you want for your pencil case. It's completely normal for your yarn to get tangled up a little bit. The way that I prevent this is to just keeping the yarn that I'm carrying in front instead of at the back. So I keep it at front while I'm working and then when I switch colors, I just hold it in place at the front as well. And that makes the twisting of yarns a little bit less. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. So it's in front as I'm pulling it. And then I'm going to bring this in the front like that, unraveled the yarn. And then I do the next color. I'm going to turn. And then I'm going to continue the row. Here's an example of how you can adjust the pattern to your liking. So instead of doing one row of checkers, I'm going to be repeating the colors for two rows to make my checker boxes a little bit bigger. So if you don't like the very thin pattern checkers, you can do two rows of the same color on top of each other to make the boxes thicker. So to do this, make sure that you are carrying your yarn. Okay. Chain one, which is your turning chain. Turn your work. Just single crochet with the same color to make your checker boxes bigger. So I'm going to repeat the same steps 
As before, there's nothing different except for which color you're using where. Here's what the finished row looks like. If you like the look of this better, you can do two rows of the same color. You can do one row, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, you can increase the number of stitches you do for each color. It's completely up to you. Just keep working and keep doing rows until you have this length. I have crocheted the length that I wanted and I did change up the pattern a little bit and I'm going to put that up on the screen for anyone who wants to do it similar to mine. I started with 15 foundation chains and I did three stitches each for each color and then I did two rows of the same color pattern and then I switched. And I also just want to say that it's completely normal for your yarns to get twisted up. So if that's happening, I recommend that you take some time to unravel the twist. I've put the bobby pin here and this just marks the length of my pencil case and separates it from the flap that I'm going to be making next. So completely similar to what we did for the heart pencil case, I'm just going to be doing two to three, probably four regular rows after my separation. So I'm going to have just four regular rows and then I'm going to start doing decreases to make the little curved edge. This is where my pencil case ends and the flap starts. So I did four rows of the same pattern that I had been doing. And when I fold my pencil case, this is what the flap basically looks like. Now, there are so many different ways that you can make your pencil case. You can just keep doing rows until your flap is as big as you want. And then you can have like a square flap instead of like a rounded flap like we did over here. So there's so many options for customizations that you can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two more rows with some decreases on the side to give it slight curve. So not a completely rounded edge, but just a slight curve. So I'm going to be following the same steps that I did for the other pencil case when doing decreases. And it's going to be a little bit hard to show it on camera since the yarn does get tangled and this huge stand is really difficult to work around, but I am going to try my best. So over here, since I'm starting my next color, I'm going to turn my work. I've got this and then to single crochet two together or to make your decrease, basically I'm going to insert my hook into the same stitch pull up a loop, but not complete the single crochet. Instead, I'm going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over pull through all three loops, making a single crochet decrease or single crocheting two stitches together. So I inserted one single crochet in each stitch, and now I have two stitches left. So I'm going to be single crocheting both of them together. Insert your hook. Pull up a loop, do not complete the single crochet, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. So off camera, I just chained one and turned my work, and now I'm going to be doing a single crochet decrease. But this time, since I have to switch colors, I can't complete it with the pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to white and then complete the single crochet decrease. And then I'm just going to insert one single crochet in each stitch until again I have only two stitches left. I've got two stitches left and I'm going to single crochet both of them together. I already switched to my other color in the previous stitch. And this is how I'm just going to complete my next row. So adding those two rows of single crochet two together or the decreases gave a nice little curve to the edge of my flap. Do not chain one, do not fasten off, and do not cut this yarn because you're going to need this to make the clasp. But before we make the clasp, we're going to need to make our strawberry just to see if our clasp, the round thing, can fit around our strawberry, which we're going to be using as like a button. So we're going to make our strawberry next and then we're going to complete this row over here. To make the strawberry, I'm using the same hook size, the same yarn size, and we're going to start off by making a magic ring. Once you've twisted it like this, you can directly chain one and then let go 
So you have your chain one, now you're gonna do another chain. So that makes a total of two chains and these two chains don't count as a stitch. Now inside this magic circle, we're gonna be inserting 12 double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's my first double crochet and I have to insert 11 more to make a total of 12 double crochets inside the magic ring. So here I've got 12 double crochets inside my magic ring and now you can tighten. And now you're going to be slip stitching into the very first double crochet that you made. So be careful when you're looking at this. This is gonna be your chain two and then this is gonna be your first stitch. So that's your chain one, chain two, and this is your first stitch. So just go into your very first double crochet and slip stitch to join the round and then you can tighten. Now in the same stitch where you just joined your round, you're going to be inserting one half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, and just do a half double crochet. And now in the next stitch over here, insert four double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. In the next stitch, we're going to insert one half double crochet. And then in that same stitch, one single crochet as well. In the next stitch, just one single crochet. In the next stitch, one single crochet again. We're going to do a half double crochet and now in that same stitch we're going to be inserting a double crochet so in the same place where you just did your half double insert a double crochet so now we've done half of the strawberry and now we're going to chain one and then just repeat the same things that we did on this side but the opposite way over here so we're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch and then a half double in the same stitch single crochet in the next stitch another single crochet in the next stitch so not the same stitch and then a single crochet and a half double crochet in the next stitch. So I did my single, now in the same stitch I'm going to be doing a half double. Now we're going to be doing four double crochets in the same stitch. So one, two, three, and four. I did all of those in the same stitch. Now in the next stitch, I'm gonna be doing a half double crochet. And in that very last stitch, you can just slip stitch to end the strawberry like that. This you chain one, and then you can cut it to tighten. So this next part's gonna be a bit confusing, but bear with me. The steps that I just showed you for the strawberry, I redid them but with a thinner red yarn because that one was turning out to be way too big. But if you like this style and if you have a thinner yarn that you want to use, you can do it with a thinner yarn. So I used a 3.5 millimeter hook with it, but a 3 millimeter hook or a 4 millimeter hook should work just fine. But because my yarn was very thin, what happened is that it made a smaller charm that works well for my checkers box. But if you don't have a thinner yarn, you can use the same yarn that you've been using for your pencil case. But instead of following the steps for the strawberry that I showed you, just follow the same steps that you did and make this heart that we made for the previous pencil case. And then once you have the heart, you can just do the green stem and leaves from the steps that I'm gonna show you next. So to make the green stem, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook and this green yarn that is the same thickness as the other yarns that I've been using, but my red is just thinner. So I'm gonna insert my hook. You can insert your hook into any corner edge, 
So it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be inserting it into this last fourth double crochet that we did. And then you're going to make a loop with your green yarn or whatever color yarn you're using and slide it through. Once you've done that, you're just going to chain one and we're going to count this chain one as our first slip stitch. And I'm going to go into the next chain and then I'm going to pull it through and make a slip stitch. Then I'm going to go into the next one so you can go into the center. So I just went through any center hole that I could find and I'm going to pull it through and then make a slip stitch again. So we have three slip stitches so far and now I'm going to be making the stem. So to do that, you're going to chain four, two, three, and four. And now you're going to be slip stitching into the second chain from your hook. So this is the first chain, this is the second chain, and you're going to be going into it and making a slip stitch. So there's my slip stitch and I'm going to do this into this chain and this chain as well. So do two more slip stitches into the chains. And there you have your little stem and then slip stitch back into the same place where you did your previous slip stitch to start the stem. And that's just going to end your stem like that. And now, since you did two slip stitches here, which was your chain one and then your first slip stitch, we also have to do two slip stitches here. Sorry for all the background noise. It's just really noisy today. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch and slip stitch. And then the next one as well. Okay, and now we're gonna be starting our leaves. So for the leaves, I'm going to be chaining four, one, two, three, and four. And now you're going to be slip stitching into the back loops of this. So that's your slip stitch that you did before you started the leaf. And now you're going to be slip stitching into only the back loop. So not both of them, only this back loop over here, like that. And then you just slip stitch. And it's not going to make sense now, but that's basically how it's going to look. And now you're going to start your next sleeve. Just make it tight and I'm going to do this. Sorry, it's, this is really difficult to show, but I'm just going to chain four again to do my next sleeve. And then I'm going to be slip stitching into the back loops of the other slip stitch. So not both of them, just this back loop over here. So I slip stitch and this is what it looks like. It's not the neatest way to do leaves, but it's pretty easy and simple and it makes the leaves kind of puffy, which is the look that I'm going for. So I'm gonna do my third leaf now. So again, I'm gonna chain four. If you're a beginner, this part might be difficult for you to do because there's a lot of stitches to handle and work around. But there's lots of strawberry tutorials out there on YouTube, so you could try one of those if this is a bit tricky. Okay, I'm just going to slip stitch into the back loop of whatever slip stitch is next. There's no rule for this. There's no specific guideline that you need to follow. Just make as many leaves as you want or as you need, and you should be good. So I ended up doing just four leaves, and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to end my strawberry by just slip stitching into any of the back stitches where my hook can fit. So maybe I'll try going into this one over here. I'm just going to slip stitch to connect and end this. And there you go. There's your little strawberry. I decided to add some white seeds and I'm just doing this with some white yarn and a plastic needle. Here is my attached strawberry. This is what the back looks like. I just pulled them through and just tied lots and lots of knots. And now we're going to start by combining our piece together. Do a little border here and then do my clasp up here and then connect the edges with slip stitches like we did before. 
I've already cut the white, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carry the white with me, otherwise your stitches will get loose. And then I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna turn my work around. And I'm just gonna work a single crochet into that same stitch. Sorry, not a single crochet, a slip stitch. Just did a slip stitch over there. And I'm so sorry, it's hard to see. It's just really hard to manage all these different pieces. And now I'm going to be inserting one slip stitch till I come over here. So I went off camera to try and fix my setup a little bit so I can show you what I'm doing a little bit better. But basically what I did is that I inserted a slip stitch, then another slip stitch and another slip stitch. And now I've chained seven and this is your clasp. So chain the number that can comfortably fit around your little charm. So your clasp goes around and then you're just going to slip stitch back into these stitches. I'm going to copy what I did here. So I did three slip stitches here. So I'm going to do three over here. So I'm going to go into, I didn't go over here. So I'm going to skip this one as well. And I'm going to slip stitch over there. And then two more slip stitches. I'm going to fasten that off later, but this is basically what it looks like. I've just tucked in some of the pieces so you can better see what I was showing you. This is basically your flap and this is the clasp that goes around your strawberry. And now we're going to be joining the sides together. side and once again I'm going to chain one, chain two and just cut to fasten off and I'm going to be tucking this piece in so I'm just going to push it inside okay and there you go we finished both of our pencil cases let me know which one was your favorite in the comments or which one you'll be trying